All right, I'm gonna Blender Savage. So today we'll use uh, another noise tool landscape add-on to make landscape. So you can make landscape uh, a landscape scene from scratch. You can try to reshape your mesh into hills, things like that, or you can use an add-on available in Blender. Uh, there are a lot of add-ons that you can download and install, but there's some already built into Blender. We just have to activate them. So to activate them, you're gonna go up here to edit, not edit mode, but edit right next to file, upper left hand corner, click on edit. Then go down to preferences. So edit then preferences. You should get a window like this. On the left panel, you're gonna to wanna to select add on, add ons. Here we go, add ons. We're gonna add these. So these are a bunch of add ons here in Blender. You just have to turn them on if you wanna use them. We're gonna scroll down. You wanna activate this one right here Add Mesh ANC Landscape, another noise tool. So you're gonna left click on the box to the left of it to get a check mark there. That lets you know that it's turned on. And it's, um, as soon as you open add-ons, just scroll down a bit and it's right there. You don't have to search for it. It's right here at the, uh, at the end of the first uh, options available there. No, all right, so that's there. And I'm gonna close out the box and it's active. So now if you notice there, I should have forgot to show you guys something. Uh, it says add mesh. So if I go to the add menu under mesh, it should be there. If it says add curve, it would be inside uh, the add curve menu. So if I go shift A to bring up the add menu, there's mesh, there's landscape there. So if I turn it off, it won't be available. But now since I activated it, it's available now. So I'm gonna use it. First, I'm gonna delete my cube here. X key, delete. Now shift A, mesh, and down to landscape. Here we go. And you get a menu down here. Let me click on it. There we go. If uh, you start doing other stuff with your mesh over here, you're gonna lose your menu. You have to hit F9 to bring it back. And if it doesn't come back, you're gonna have to delete it and bring it in again. So you can get this menu here, this module menu here. So over here, there's an operator presets. You can change it to a different type of a uh, mountain. You can go to mountain one. You can go over to cliff, get a cliff, see? But we'll just go with the, uh, the default one. We go back to uh, restore defaults. What was the default one? Wasn't it def uh, defaults? Oh wait, minus. You go minus, minus, minus. All right, here we go. Can't go too far back. All right, you can triangulate your mesh. It'll actually make these faces a triangle set of squares. Let me turn that off. Uh, you can use a sphere. Let's say you want to make a small planet. Sphere. See, you can do that. Let me turn that off. We're just going to leave those alone there. Uh, you can give it a name. Uh, you can select the material from here. Uh, for subdivisions, you can actually increase the polygon count, the number of squares here, the resolution. You can increase the number. You want to have these to be um, consistent. Uh, sorry, you want these to be the same, the same number. That way you get even number of um, even number of sizes for the faces. All, all the, le the length and the width of each face here would be the same. So you want to have these the same. Uh, this is the size of your mesh. So right now it's two by two blender units. As you can see here, two squares, two squares, two squares, two squares. All right, so I'm gonna leave those alone. You can make it bigger there. You can also scale it up there. I'm just gonna go over here to noise type. Uh, go to header row to ring. Click on that. You can change it to something different. <clears throat> Let's see, marble, cool. I'm gonna go over with, uh, what am I gonna go with? What are noise rocks? Oops, what did I close right now? Noise settings, there we go. Let's see, there's strata H terrain, noise rocks. Where's noise rocks? There's noise rocks right there. All right, here we go, so got some noisy rocks. Uh, for noise base, this is noise base right here. I'm gonna change it from Perlin to Blender. You can try these other ones here, like Veroni. You know, yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. You can just experiment with it. Uh, but we will we will bring in some water in here, some water, so it's gonna be an island. Just a heads up. Cell noise, I don't like cell noise. Looks too, too square. I'm gonna go over with uh, Blender right here. Cool. All right, now I'm gonna change the height. I'm gonna make this taller. So right here is the height is a 0.5. So it's a half a blender unit. That's how tall this thing is. One for front view, it's about half a blender unit. Or maybe not, it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna change it over to one. One enter, there we go. So now it's a lot taller. And get out of my way. Now I'm gonna bring in the, the water plane. So I'm gonna scroll down. So you have to scroll down, look for the water plane right there. And I'm gonna click it. There we go, I got it selected. Now I got a water plane in there. I'm gonna scroll down. That's the water line there. And then for level right here, I'm gonna increase the, the number from 0 0.01, I'm gonna increase it up 0.05, and that'll bring it up a bit. 
0 0.05. There we go. Now to scroll down to access the water plane and the, uh, the level down there after I activate a water plane, it opened this menu up. So I had to scroll down to open that as well. This all depends on the size of your monitor or resolution of your screen, uh, how much you can get, how much visibility you get of this menu. All right, so there it is. Now I'm going to take this into the UV editor, the UV shader, so I can start shading my um, my mountain here. I want to give it some color. So I'm going to select only the mountains, because right now they're both selected, the water plane and the landscape. So I'm going to click on the landscape there just once. There we go. If you double-click it, you're gonna, you might end up selecting the, the plane instead. See, now I got the plane. I wasn't even trying to click on the plane. So you want to just click it one time. So click the landscape one time. See, I got the plane selected. There you go, landscape. I got the landscape selected. You can also check on the uh, on the outliner over here, landscape. And here's the water plane, landscape plane. So I'm going to go over here to the UV editing, the UV editor. There's my landscape. I'm going to bring in a picture of something that looks like rocks so I can UV map it onto my mountains here for my island. So I'm going to go with the rocky um, looking island. I'm going to go to Google Images. Uh, if I type in island, then go to Images. Everybody's going to get this view right here, that tropical island. For some reason, when you think of island, you're more likely to, to think of a tropical island. And that's exactly what I think about. When I think of island, I get a scene like this, uh, the clip art image like this with a uh, small landmass with some palm trees. Not all islands look like that. So we're going to go with the Rocky Island. So if you add Rocky Island into your search, you get an idea of what we're going to make. See, we're going to go with something like this. Something like that. Something like that. Uh, there is an add-on to add trees to make trees for you, but we're not going to use that one. Uh, there's that. See, there's some of these rocky ones like this. All right, so I want to get rock texture. So I'm going to go inside here and Google Images. I'm going to type in rock texture seamless, seamless. That way you can't tell where the, uh, the edge or the border is of your rock. And I'm going to try to see if I can use one of these here. Uh, so remember, if you're using it for commercial purposes, you might have to pay. And if, you, uh, if it's not for commercial purposes, you, it's best to credit the, the author or whoever created the rock pattern. There's that one. Uh, there's that. You can also go to um, websites that host textures. So let me try uh, 3D textures. 3D textures.me. You can get rock textures from here as well. And these are also free. Uh, well, some of those from Google Images, those are not free. So just a heads up. Be careful with that if you plan on using it for commercial purposes. Also, if you plan on using something for commercial purposes and you didn't create it, uh, please do not take credit for that. That is straight up thievery right there. All right, rocks. Here we go, rocks. Let's pick some rocks. All right, all right. It's a good looking rock texture here. One of these actually called Cliff Rock. Let me look for that. There it is, Cliff Rock. Cliff Rock 002. Just rock, stone wall, stone patch. So I'm going to go with this one as a rocky appearance. Because these ones that look like pebbles, if I UV map that on the island, it looks like it's just made out of a bunch of rocks piled on top of each other. It might fall apart. Or it'll look like it'll fall apart. So I'm going to go with this one right here, Cliff Rock. This one looks aggressive to me. All right, so there it is. So I'm going to click on this button here. Watch out for the ads. Don't click on those. Take you to other websites. I'm going to download all, all the maps. It's going to download these to my desktop. Logged into my Gmail account. Let sign out. There we go. And I actually just want that one. So I'm going to download this one right here. It's the base color file. Uh, these other ones will give it more of a 3D look. But I'm not going to get that close up to my island. So I'm just going to use this one right here. All right, there's my file. I'm going to put it on my desktop. Let's drag and drop it over to my desktop. Whoop. There we go. I'm back over to Blender. I'm going to bring in the picture in here. So I'm going to go to open up here in the UV editor, the left window. And I'm going to go to open and click on desktop. And that picture file should be in here somewhere. There it is. Cliff Rock uh, 00 base color. Double click it in. There it is. Let me zoom out. I want to see it over here. So I'm um, going to do a couple of things. First, I have to activate the view, the render viewport shader, P key, render. And I have not clicked on this yet, on this mesh at all, because if I do, it's going to deselect it. So you don't want that. Hit the A key to select all. If you select one vertex, just hit the A key to select all. Z key, rendered, render viewport shader. Uh, and also now I need the, uh, the material on it. So I'm going to go right here and click on the marble icon for materials. And then new, and create a material for this. 
and then to the right of base color and click on the rivet pass the white bar click on the rivet and then go over to image texture image texture and we already brought the picture in so i don't have to hunt it down i can just click on this picture icon right here and there it is cliff rock all right it's mapped on there that doesn't look so good so unwrap it u key unwrap Cool, there it is. So it just unwrapped that whole thing, this whole island, flattened it down, and put it over that image there. So that image there, it's on my island now. Uh, those cracks look really wide though. Let me just show you real quick in the layout panel here. Let me go over to rendered. See, there it is. If you like it like that, you can leave it like that as this. I don't like that pixelation there. So I'm gonna go back over to UV editing. I'm actually gonna make this bigger here. So by me increasing the size of the map over here on the left panel, It'll um, give me a better render over here on the right side. It'll repeat this image uh, across all the little faces there. So I'll make it three times bigger. So put the mouse over here, S, three, enter. Make sure you do this, everything's yellow. If not, hit the A key over here and hit the A key over here again. All right, so I just increase that. So I'm gonna go back over here to layout. Got the render viewport shader activated. So I think that looks a little neater. I don't see much pixelation now. I do see, I do see some there, but we can fix that later. We can smooth out the surface. We can also bring something else in to cover that up. Mostly smoothing out where the will fix that for us. All right, so now I want to add grass. I want to put grass up here up top. So remember the uh, the rocky island. It's patches of grass. See, there we go, some grass there. There's some grass up there. Or is it moss? There's some, some bushes there, some vegetation there. So I'm going to go back over to 3D Textures. You can also just Google image, just search um, grass, seamless, grass texture, seamless. Uh, over here in 3D Textures.me, I'm going to click on Vegetable. I'm going to check out these grass textures they have here. Here's Forest Ground, 002. Here's uh, Jungle Floor. That one looks cool. Except all those uh, roots there, I don't think they're going to come out so good. I like this one right here. This one looks like Clovers. So I'm going to click on that one, Grass 002. I'll download these files. Watch out for the advertisements. And um, it's this one right here. Download all maps. Download all the maps. Click on that one there. It's downloading that. Or actually, it's giving me this first. All right, here's all the other ones for texturing. I'm just going to go with this one. Just a quick basic model. I'm going to click on that. Oops. Where's the download button? Is that it? And close that out. Download, download. There it is. Download. Download me this file. Right download, right click, save image as. There we go. Why did not why did I not do that from the start? Alright, so once you get your image, right click it, save image as, save it on the desktop. Desktop there, grass, that's okay. Save. All right, so if you're sitting download immediately like that, if you get one of these, right click it, select save image as. All right, back over to Blender, uh, back over to UV editing. I'm gonna switch this over to the wireframe, shift Z, then alternate A to deselect alternate A. There we go. I'm gonna bring in the picture on this side over here. So I'm gonna click on the folder icon over here in the UV editor folder icon, select desktop, and there should be a picture here of the grass. There it is, grass, zero, zero, 002 color. So we'll click it open, there it is, cool. All right, I gotta put it on something over here. Also have to create a material for it. So this part is important here. So you don't switch this one out, it's gonna switch out your, um, your texture for your first material, which is the rocks. Actually, go ahead and name it. I'll call it rocks. We go enter, commit the plus sign, new. This will be my grass, I'm gonna click in there. Grass, enter, uh, base color, click on the rivet there. Then image texture, I already brought in the image, so I can just click on the image icon here and select grass right there. All right, I can't see it though, because it's in the wireframe, also has not been applied or assigned to anything. So I'm gonna one for front view, I can drag select the top of it here, and I can put that on, on everything that's selected here. Uh, but let's say I want more than that, this kind of looks very square, so I'm gonna hit shift Z. There we go, now is the render viewport shader. You can also hit the Z key, select rendered. Uh, you want to switch over to face selection, face selection, there we go. And then you can choose where you want to 
what areas you want to map, you want to put the the, the, um, the grass on, you can hold on the left mouse button and you just left click them individually. And that's very tedious. So you can use a circle select tool. So on your keyboard, hit C for circle, C for circle, C for Carlos, C for Charlie. And then you can hold on the left mouse button and drag across whatever you want to select. If you want to deselect something, hold down shift and then click again. Hold down shift, left click, and it will deselect it. If you right click, it turns it off. There you go. So see for circle select, it's going to select this area here. You can also spin the wheel on your mouse. You can make it smaller or bigger. Let me right click it so I can turn it off and rotate my view over here. See for circle, small selection here. Select the patch here to, to add grass to. Maybe around there. There we go. Bigger circle. There we go. Maybe some around there. Some around there. Right click to turn it off. You go over here. See for circle. Maybe I'll add some in there. Right click, turn it off. Move my mouse around. See some in there. Some in there. There we go. Right click, move. See and drag it through there. Maybe some in there. Let me get that hole there. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. Right click. All right. So this area is going to get the grass. May I want more? Yeah, may I do want more? Let's go with some in there. All right. Once you uh, select the area you want to put the grass on, you're going to hit the U key, select unwrap. There you go, there it is. Now you're going to go over here, select grass, and then assign. It'll make that grass. See, there we go. Um, so right now, each of the little squares here is one of those faces there. So this grass here looks humongous. So I can fill this up. So how big should I make this? You can freehand it. You can hit the S key and just pull the mouse until you get really small looking grass inside of the image on the right. Keep going. Or I can just type in, uh, let's go with 15 times bigger. 15, enter. All right, now I'm gonna go over here to the layout, see how that looks. It's not bad. What do you wanna do also? Uh, you're gonna right click it, select Shade Smooth. It'll smooth it out for you, there we go. Let's see, maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go back to uh, UV editing. Make sure everything over here is still yellow. Uh, don't deselect that area. If for some reason you click on something, you deselect your grass. You click on grass here, and then click on select, and it'll select it for you again. So if you deselect your grass, if you click over here somewhere, select grass from the materials, and then click on the select button inside of materials, it'll select your grass. So that's for scale, and just pull out some more. Uh oh, I got that area there selected. Let me undo, click in there. And then select this uh, select. There we go. That's for scale. Pull it out some more. I just freehand this. Pull the mouse away. Lay out. Uh, it's too much. I uh, should have just left it as it was. We'll go back to UV editing. Control Z on this window. Control Z. All right. See what I got now. Still. Control Z. Control Z. Control Z. There we go. All right. So I'll leave it like that. That looks cool. So S15 enter. That that works. Looks uh looks bushy. Cool. All right. So going back over here to the layout view. Once you're done, uh, you'll be mapping that layout over here. And now, uh, right click, make sure make sure right click, select smooth. And then you're gonna select the the plane, the water plane. Select the water plane here. All right. So now we're gonna make the water. Here's my water plane. I'm going to take that into edit mode, tap key for edit mode. It's just a plain face, four edges, four vertices. So make sure you take it edit mode. We're going to subdivide it. Make sure the entire plane is selected. If not, hit the A key. Make sure only the plane is in edit mode, not the island. So only the plane should be selected. I'm going to right click the plane, click on subdivide, hit this module menu over here. You want to pull it open, change the number of cuts to 10, 10 enter. There we go. I'm going to subdivide it one more time, right click. Subdivide again, and also increase the number of cuts to 10. Enter, there we go, I got more cuts. Uh, you don't wanna to subdivide too much because you're gonna crash your computer if you don't have a strong graphics card. So I'm gonna triangulate the mesh now. Everything is still selected. If not, hit the A key, make sure everything's yellow. 
But a triangulate mesh, it's actually going to make these faces from squares to triangles. It's going to cut a line across them diagonally. Uh, triangulate is control T, T for triangle. There we go, control T, T for triangle. It will triangulate your mesh. There we go. Now I'm going to switch over to vertex selection. I'm going to try to create some ripples here for my water. I'm going to go over here to the vertices option here in the upper left-hand corner, vertex selection. There we go. Now I'm going to deselect all of this. That's alternate A, alt A. There we go. Alt A deselects your mesh. Deselects everything. Now I want to randomly select these. I can start just clicking around, holding the shift key, randomly select vertices. Uh, that's also very tedious. So instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a random select tool. So up top right here, it says select. There's a select button. You're going to click on it. You get this menu here. And you're going to go with select random. So click the select button up top. Select random. There we go. So I just randomly selected these. Now I'm going to pull these up. And I also want to pull them up randomly and pull up the mesh uh, around it. So I'm going to go over here on the right side. Uh, there's a bullseye right there. You're going to click on it to activate it. So I'll use the shortcut. It's the letter O. All right, it's active now that it's blue. And over here, this is like a, a smooth proportional editing. This will allow me to pull those, those uh, vertices along with the mesh around it instead of just the individual vertices. I'm going to change this one over here to random. There we go. All right, I'm in G. And you get the circle here. That's your area of influence, how much additional mesh you're going to pull up. So if you want to pull up too much, you can make it smaller. I already hit G, I'm in Z, so I can restrict it to up and down. So you can just pull it up with my mouse. You don't want to go up too high. And see if I make the circle bigger, I get more ripples. So I'll make it big enough to cover the whole mesh. There we go. And then point one, enter. There we go. So that was G, Z, point one, enter. I'll pull that up. Uh, I know it looks horrible. We'll fix that up later. So for now, we just want, um, we just want all this distortion here. All right. So now tap key back to object mode. There you go. So I'm going to smooth it out some. I'm going to right click it. Select shade smooth. I'm back in object mode. It will smooth it out. Now it looks like boiling water. So I know the, there's not a volcano around here, but we'll fix that in a bit. All right, I'm going to go back over to shading, UV shading. So I can try to give it properties of water. So UV shading. Uh, sorry, shading, shade, not UV shading, just shading. Sorry, shading workspace. There we go. Let me zoom into that. Decimal key. I'm going to give this a properties of water. So I'm going to click on new here. Create the new material for it. I'm going to delete this one here. I can play around with these settings. Try to make water. Or I can just bring in my own shaders for it. So I'm going to delete this one. So I'm going to left click it first. Individually selected. Select them both. Select this one. There you go. So click away. There we go. Now I got that one alone. Delete. There we go. I'm going to bring in a, a mix shader. Shift A. Search. Mix. Make shader, position over here on the left, left click to drop it. I'm going to connect the shader here to the surface on the material output. There we go. Now the two that I'm going to mix up, it's going to be a refraction BSCF shader and a glossy shader. Glossy BSCF, so search. Uh, refraction. There you go, refraction BSCF. And it give me a uh, reflect similar to water. There we go. Now I'm going to bring in glossy, shift A, search, glossy. Which glossy just like water and connect that in there. All right. Now I'm going to change the values in these. So for glossy, I'm going to change the roughness all the way down to zero. Uh, for IOR, the IOR of water is 1.333. So bring that down to 1.333. And then for the roughness, uh, you can bring it down to zero or you can bring it up just a bit. So I'm going to type in a dot zero five. There you go. Whenever you're making water, you want to have roughness as low as possible, all the way down to zero, or just something close to zero. And uh, also when you're making water, if you see IOR anywhere, make that 1.333. There's my water. Cool. Looks pretty scary. Looks like liquid metal. All right. I want to bring in an environment here, so it has something to reflect off. So whenever you're making something that's um, reflective, you, you got to have something to reflect off of it, so it looks, uh, so it looks real. If it's water or glass, chrome. You're going to have to bring something else to make it reflective. So I'm going to go over to hdrhaven.com, and I'm going to bring in a picture or an environment, an HDRI file, for my background there. And it also uh, it'll adopt the, uh, the properties of the light from the, from the HDRI file. So hdrhaven.com, you can get some free files here, HDRIs. All right. I want something like a, like a beach or ocean scene so I can get the... Uh, 
the sunset background so I can get some 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 horizon in there. Let me try. Let me scroll through here. Let me try skies. I'm not liking those. I want something with some water. What do they have over here on the left? Let's see outdoors. Let me type an ocean in here, or I'll type in beach. Cool. There we go. Let's see what happens if I get ocean. Ocean. All right, so I'm going to go with this file here. There's some rocks there in the background, so that'll help out with the rocky appearance. And uh, there's a horizon there. I'll click on that one. Let me scroll down. Uh, there's different ones. I think sometimes in these higher ones, you have to uh, pay for them. But the 4K one here is good enough, so I'm going to click on that one. Wait for it to download. There it is. I'll put it on the desktop for convenience. I'm going to drag and drop it to my desktop. Drag and drop, bam. All right, back over to Blender. Here we go. So now I'm going to bring it in here as the background. So select the World tab in your Properties panel. Click on the World. There you go. Not Materials, not the not the red marble, but the red earth right there. Uh, then you'll see Color. To the far right of that, in the far right of that, you should see uh, a little rivet. You're going to click on that, and you're going to go with Environment Texture, Environment Texture. There we go. I'm going to click on open, bring that file in. And over here, I'm going to select desktop. I put it on my desktop. And it was called Simon's Town Rock. So we'll click it in. And it takes a while to load. Also, um, I can't see it right now on this shader. That's the look dev. I switch over to rendered. And then I can see it there. See, there it is. And I'll go back over to layout over here. There we go. All right, and as you can tell here, my, my rocks still look kind of weird. Hold on the middle mouse button. Sorry, not my rocks, my uh, my water. So you can reduce the uh, the number of waves. You can decimate this. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over here on the properties panel, click on the modifier, add modifier. Add modifier, you can choose decimate. Decimate. You're going to bring the ratio down. So let me try 0.5, see how that looks, 0.5. There we go, see so it brought it down somewhat. Let's get a point 0.1, let's try that, point 0.1. There we go, see so, you know, I got some better looking waves. Also, did I already smooth this one out? I think I did, shade smooth, cool. Let me try point 0.05. There we go, looks a little neater. And let me go over to the camera view. I'm not liking the camera view. I want something like this to be my camera view. Let's see, something like right there. So I'm gonna make this my camera view now. It's gonna be control alternate zero. There we go. That's still kind of too zoomed out. Let me zoom in a little bit more. All right, control, turn to zero there. Cool. All right, I'm going to use the water here to hide the bottom of the island. So I'm going to click on the water. S for scale and just pull the mouse out. There you go. Left click. It, it brought it up as well. So I'm in G for grab and then Z. And pull it down, not too far. Maybe like around here. Left click, well, the one a lake in there. Yeah, why not? Left click right there. There we go. There's my camera view there. And I can use it to try to hide some of the, the bottom there. And maybe I could bring my camera up as well. So let me click on my camera here. G, Z, pull it up, pull it down. What do I want? Let me hit the end key for Nancy. I'm going to go over here to view. Lock camera to view. Make sure you have your camera selected. And now I can rotate a little differently here. There we go. Try to get a good view there. Let's see. And try to hide the water there with the horizon. That's not bad. All right. Let's got to pull the camera up. So I'm going to turn off lock to view there. Over here, click on the camera. So I click on the frame, select the camera from here, GZ. Let up some. That's not bad. All right. I'm going to hide this menu, sidebar menu, end key. I'm going to go over here to the render tab. It looks like a backup of DSLR camera. I'm going to activate uh, ambient occlusion, get some of that ambient light. Uh, bloom, get some of that glow there. There we go, very intense. Uh, and if anytime you're using water, you're going to want to use screen space reflections. Screen space reflections, there we go. Uh, the bloom looks kind of strong, so I'm going to open up the bloom menu. And you're going to actually try to bring it down. Intensity, let's see. There we go. There we go. 
All right, if you don't like that angle, you can always change your angle. This is the one I'm going with right now. Maybe something like right here, I'll try this. Alternate zero. And there we go. Let me hit uh, set for top view. Are we going to top view? Set for top view. There we go. There's my camera. I'm going to G for grab, pull it back a bit. Zero for camera view. G for grab. And put the island in there. There we go. Uh, I can see some of the, the square faces here. I don't want those. You know, I just rotate my island. G for grab. G, Z. Oh, sorry. R for rotate. And then Z. And then just move a mouse there. Got some blur in there. Let's see. Let's go with the view like... That's not bad right there. Left click there. Cool. Also, the, another cool thing about the, the bloom right here, you can just use it to try to hide some of that stuff. See? You just pull it up. There we go. Cool. All right. So I like that. And all you got to do is just hit F12 to render. So remember to activate ambient occlusion, get some ambient light, some bloom, get some of that glow there, and it's grease race reflection whenever you're using water. So F12. Before to render. Uh, zoom out, there we go. Uh, also, if you don't like those squares, see I still got some squares there. Let me hit escape. Let me show you guys how to, what else you can do to fix that. I'm going to go over to UV editing. Face selection. Make sure there's an edit mode over here. If not, go ahead and select edit mode. And now I'm going to hit the, uh, I'm going to select these faces here. The ones that have, um, the ones that are kind of square right there. You don't want the shop corners, right? So I'm just going to hold on the left mouse button, individually click like a pattern here. And just get one sharp corner there instead of a bunch of them. All right, so I'll make it, I'll end it off right there. So C key, drag select around there. Uh, right click, hold on shift, click that one. All right, there we go. So that's what I don't want. Zero for camera view. That's what the camera sees. All right. Hold on shift key. Because all that's important right now is just what the camera sees. So the other one's out of the out of the view of the camera. That don't matter much. Let me get that one there. All right. See these obviously look square there. Let's just get one square. And there we go. It looks a little rounder where it cuts off right there. I can also hold down control key, select something across, and it'll select that there. There we go. There we go. Let me get this one here. Shift. Shift. All right, that looks a little better to me. All right, now I'm gonna unwrap the whole thing again. U key, unwrap. And earlier I scaled these up by 15, so S, 15, enter. There we go. All right, so go back to layout, this view, cool. So F12, and should get less of those sharp corners. See, there we go, looks a little neater. Oh, what happened there? I thought I fixed that up. Oh, I know what happened. Escape, UV editing, assign, rock, grass, assign, there we go, all right, uh, there we go, F12, there we go, so I forgot to sign earlier, so I got some of the little chopped up stuff there, there you go, so there's that, uh, another view you could do, I know it's one of my students so these other views where he gets really up close. And I like I like how his uh I like how, what he's been rendering out. I do a view like this. Control turn to zero there. There we go. Let me select the camera. G for grab. Maybe like right there. F12 for that one. I go, it looks cool too. It looks cool too. All right. Almost forgot one more thing. Uh, if you don't want the shiny grass, if you don't want it to be very reflective, go ahead and select your landscape and go over to materials and then select the appropriate material. So, for instance, grass here. You're going to scroll down and you're going to increase the roughness, the roughness all the way to one. Make it less shiny. Uh, my rocks here are so shiny. So, I'm going to go over to the rocks, rocks material. And increase roughness all the way to one. Make it dull. There you go. Be real for camera view. Bam. 
Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.